you wanted the best deck in format. Social media would have you believe it was a Charizard post rotation and after Tord's magnificent first place finish at the European International Championships, it's pretty hard to deny. This Pokemon is your main attacker and energy accelerator all rolled into one, whilst your other Pokemon are putting in a lot of work to ensure that you're never without the cards you need to succeed at any point in the game. Charizard EX has been and will continue to be a great pick whether you're at your local shop or vying for a championship trophy. Now for this deck profile, we're going to use Tord's championship winning list as a base. Let's break down the deck and run through how it all comes together. Starting with the main Pokemon, Charizard EX is an absolute beast. 330 HP, an ability that searches for and accelerates energy into play and an attack that scales to absurd amounts of damage. What is there not to like about Charizard? Powerful as it is on its own, there is just enough conditions placed on its damage and linearity in the way that it functions that it's necessary to feature a cast of supporting Pokemon alongside it. Charizard has what I call a vertical power to it. Its strength manifests in the way that its damage and energy acceleration is all contained in a single board slot. The beauty of not requiring a Pokemon like Baxcalibur to accelerate your energy or Iron Crown EX to empower your damage is that you instead get to dedicate bench spots to Pokemon which can support Charizard. Chief amongst these Pokemon is Pidgeot EX. Its ability to put any card into your hand each turn means you can always plan around having the right puzzle piece in hand. Whether the path to victory lies around securing that first Charizard EX or looking for a boss's orders or a Turo or a Collapse Stadium to deny a prize or some other play throughout the game, Pidgeot is best in class at helping you get exactly what you need at the right time. Beyond these two, you've got a few more Pokemon to consider. You've got Manaphy and Jirachi to protect your bench from bench snipes and damage counter spam. Rotom V helps at the beginning of the game by drawing cards with instant charge, whilst Luminion here is ideally an extra out to a game-winning supporter in the mid to late game. In a similar vein, the deck includes Cleffa and Bibarel for extra draw power. In the early game, Cleffa can be an alternative way to fill your hand on the very early turns, potentially standing in for Rotom V and particularly against the likes of Spiritomb, which can lock you out from using Rotom. Whilst on the other hand, Bibarel is here in the mid to late game to help you hedge your position against a Prime Catcher or Counter Catcher on your Pidgeot and a Disruption play at the same time. Not to mention, if your opponent goes for a TM Devolution play, you can simply put your Bibarel straight back down and play towards whatever win condition that you might require in the late game. Despite being a 1-1 line, the idea behind Barrel is that you don't necessarily need it straight away, you just need to look for it towards the mid to late game, so even if you prize or happen to discard a piece early, as long as you get that Pokemon down before the very final turns of the game, you should be okay. Lastly, I should mention that you've got one more Pokemon. Radiant Charizard steps up to the plate to help you in late game scenarios. This Pokemon is here for your usual playbook of attacking with a one prize Pokemon to throw off an opponent's prize map. That is their route towards taking the number of prizes required to win, which can be disrupted by attacking with a one prize Pokemon. Send it up when your opponent has two prizes left to take, knock out an opposing Pokemon and ideally either disrupt them or find a way to deny a two prize target. The trainer engine in Tord's Charizard list comprises more than half of the deck with a lot of straightforward and a few tricky inclusions to facilitate Charizard's game plan. You've got Buddy Buddy Poffin, Ultra Ball and Nest Ball to help you find Pokemon. Four rare candy to evolve your Pokemon throughout the game and a couple of super rod to help you get back your Pokemon and energy as needed. You've got these tools to increase your damage and Forest Seal Stone to facilitate your setup. Each of which can be searched out with Arvin, which is there to get your items and your tools as needed. Beyond Arvin, you've got the ever-present Iono to help you and hinder your opponent throughout the game, as well as a Roxanne for extra potent disruption and late game shuffle draw. Boss's Orders, Counter Catcher and Prime Catcher are all here giving you several ways to target and pull up an opponent's Pokemon from the bench. Prime Catcher is worth noting as the ace spec of choice. 
Tord seemed to favour the ability to use Prime Catcher and not consume the supporter for the turn enough to want to select it over Maximum Belt, which is a fairly common sight in Charizard decks. If you wanted to include Maximum Belt over Prime Catcher, that might be a perfectly acceptable choice depending on the way that you want to play your Charizard deck. There's a couple of curious counts to consider towards the end of the deck list. There are two Professor Turos and a Team Yells cheer in here. Though the Turo can be here to scoop out prize liabilities like Luminion and Rotom V, as well as removing a damaged Charizard EX from play, mainly the reason for the two of Turo supported by the one of Team Yells cheer is to help you counter control and stall. Typically, these decks are going to try and trap an unfavorable Pokemon in the active position, and Turo does the work here to save those Pokemon from the active and help you push your Charizard EX back into the active position. Having multiple Turo means that you can do this multiple times, and having the Team Yells cheer means that you can recycle those Turos for use once more. Another thing that's important to note about these two cards is because they're supporters, they're safe from the likes of Eri and Misfortune Sisters. Whereas cards like Switch and even Special Energies like Jet Energy are not safe necessarily from Control and Soul. It's up to you to judge what to recover with Team Yell's Cheer, and it may depend on the matchup that you're facing. For example, in the Control and Stall matchup that we just mentioned, you're going to focus on retrieving two Turos, as well as something else such as a Boss's Orders to help you through. The last couple of cards to mention here are the Lost Vacuum to help with dealing with problematic tools like Hero's Cape. And finally, Collapse Stadium gives you one extra way to remove an unwanted or damaged Pokemon from your board. The energy is a pretty simple count of just six energy. It's a pretty low count and that is fairly standard in this deck. Charizard EX only needs a couple of energy to get going and the Infernal Rain ability can directly search for and accelerate the energy alleviating the need for the energy to be found early. An interesting omission here is the newly introduced Mist Energy, which is worth considering should you suspect a rise in Roaring Moon EX or to help fend off the likes of Giratina V-Star. Playing this deck, simple as some would have you believe it is, can be pretty complicated to navigate at times. This is a tier one deck. Your expectations with it should be very high. You should want to win every single time, or at least be in with a good chance. It can really come down to how you approach each individual matchup, what order you take the KOs, and how to utilize your resources in the late game. Start the game by choosing to go first if you win the coin flip, and then work towards benching Charmander and Pidgey. Try and bench multiple if you can. You also need to try and get down Rotom and use Instant Charge to end your turn. If you're going second, you can utilize Arvin to search for a search item like Buddy Buddy Poffin or Nest Ball, as well as taking Forest Seal Stone to fill out your bench if needed, or otherwise to hold on to the V-Star effect for the following turn. It's the mid to late game where the deck becomes a bit tricky to play. Once you've established your first Charizard and Pidgeot EX, you need to start devising how you're planning to take your six prizes. You don't necessarily need to take prizes early, but at the same time, you can't let your opponent get too far ahead. Against a deck where it's difficult to take multi-prize KOs early, it might be best to favor knocking out single prize Pokemon early and taking multi-prize KOs later. Start to look for that Bidoof with a view towards having Barrel in play before the final turns. Think about cards like Choice Belt and Define Span to augment your damage, Professor Turo to deny prizes, and your various gusting options to target the right Pokemon on their bench. In the late game, Charizard reaches a critical mass where it's easily taking one-hit KOs. Leverage your Pidgeot EX to look for a disruption play as well as knocking out their draw engine if possible. If you have to, remember Radiant Charizard provides you with a single prize attacking option which can hit for upwards of 280 damage or more with the damage boosting tool. Presenting a board that is devoid of a Pokemon EX or at least attempts to hide them on the bench may be just what you need to win in a late game scenario. This has been a really brief rundown which I hope will set you off on your way playing Charizard EX.
For these deck profile videos, I wanted to introduce a new section called A Word From The Pros. And for our first pro, I've sought a tip from Natalie Miller, who is quite a well-known player internationally and somebody that I've known for a very long time in my local scene. When I asked her for her number one tip when playing Charizard, her advice was as follows. I think the biggest tip is to prioritize Pidgeot. You're better off getting Pidgeot into play and not attacking than you are just getting Zard you need the card selection of Quick Search. It seems simple, but that tip speaks a lot about the pace of this deck and how you can be slow off the mark and still succeed. Her advice and this approach has influenced the way I've played the deck a lot, and I've been okay with the slower starts once I started to keep this in mind. Finally, I'm gonna leave you with some sample gameplay in just a moment to give you an idea of how this deck goes in action. But before we get to that, if any of this has been useful for you, maybe consider dropping a like or leaving me a comment if you're feeling generous and I'll see you in the next live stream or video. So take care, goodbye, and enjoy the gameplay. Cheers. Thought I was slurring. I'm um a little parched, I think. I think I need some water. It also happens when you drink a lot of coffee. You get like a watery mouth. So all I can do here... I have to fear the Greninja. Alright, we'll do it like this. Buddy Poffin. Manaphy. Well, I could go into Cleffa. Nah, but I want the Pidgey. I want Pidgey. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go like this. Go like this. Retreat. And then end our turn. Oh, KJ. That's terrible. But that's how it works. That's how it works. Yeah, Unfair Stamp looks good. I'm very, very happy that they made that card. I think it's going to be really good. Felt bad? Nah, I don't. I like Unfair Stamp. Can't wait to, to try that card. Okay, them attaching the water. Oh, did they super cold it or did they regular attach? So no Iron Hands this turn. The best outcome for us is for them to just knock out the Zod. Okay. Good. So now we've got a bit of a position to try and play through. We've got to figure it out. Starts with Candy Pidgeot. Boss in the hand. Um, that's not... It's not really good enough, is it? We just don't have enough cards in hand, huh? I think I have to boss the Bibarel. Or something. And then just like quick search for Buddy Poffin, maybe? Buddy Poffin, and get Charmander and Cleffa. I think that's what I'm doing. Gives us cards to work with, right? Okay. 
Okay. Would have been really nice to put down another Pidgey, but we didn't want to be without a Charmander. PTCGL Radio? Are you talking about... Wait, PTCG Radio? The Wasi? Blueberry, yes. The answer is yes. Metal Bronzor can... Um, can evolve into the other type. I got a cool photo with the Wasi. Well, I got a photo with the Wasi, alright. Please do not knock out Pidgeot. Leave the bird alone. I love the Wasi. He's cool. We're about to get diced. I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it in my bones. Oh, really, Dugong? That's cool. No! No! Don't! Okay, here's the thing. If we can knock out this somehow... Give me a Nest Ball. Give me a Nest Ball. Give me a Nest Ball. Ultra Ball, Nest Ball. Arvin. Ultra Ball, Nest Ball, Arvin. Or Rotom. Okay, here we go. Attach the energy. Prime catcher. This. This. Roxanne. Oh! Okay. Oh, gosh. Is it the Zard or the Pidgey? It's gotta be the Zard, right? Take a chance. These two. It's gotta be Zard. We gotta catch up. We gotta catch up. We can't. No more mucking around, okay? No more mucking around. I'll leave one energy in the deck. One for you, one for you. Charmeleon. Two seventy. And look at this. They got a twenty nine card deck. A two card hand. They do have the barrel. Right? They do have the barrel, but we'll we'll see. Maybe they got nothing. Or maybe they just drop the Irida straight away. Okay. But maybe they can't get all the energies for Chen Pao. Have you thought about that? That was an error, though. It was an error, though. But maybe the play was to knock out the barrel. So they couldn't draw. And so, like, even if they got some energy off Shivery Chill, it wouldn't be enough for the KO. Yeah, it's cool, 13. Wait, wait, oh, oh! 
They're both in the discard, bro. They're both in the discard. I forgot. So yeah, you gotta get you got a rod, but do you have the goods? Do you have the goods? You got Ultra Ball candy. Wait, did they play the Ultra Ball first? Oh, they would have played it for, for the second big barrel, right? Yeah. But maybe they whiff. Yes, dude. All right. Wait, no. No, that's not how it's supposed to go. Okay. All right, all right. If I can hit candy off this perky stop, that would be so big for us. So what I should do is this. Boomba. Get the energy out of the deck. Alright, just thin by a little bit. And try and hit candy. Try and get lucky. Okay, let's see. Please! Okay. What does that mean? I guess all we do is attack, right? No, 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 I can Ultra Ball. I can Ultra Ball for Luminion. Yes. Ultra Ball for Luminion. I forgot. That's why you play the Luminion. Easy peasy. Now what will you do, Backscalibur? See you later. Goodbye. Luminion. Hello, Luminion? Hello? Alright, we're cooking. We're cooking. Bronzong on fair. Perhaps. But don't forget the technical machine evolution works. So if it's a TM evolution deck, I don't think that Bronzong stops that. Somebody feel free to fact check me on that. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that TM evolution would get around Bronzong. Um, Salvatore would also get around it. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh. Do you know what we're going to do here? Do you know what we're going to do here? We're going to two row. Grab back our Luminion. Haha. -ha. Boom. Now that's probably the best that we could do on that turn. I could I could have spun the stop to try and get mm, counter catcher maybe. Maybe that that is worthwhile, but That's like that's like the only other thing I could try and do there. Feels like a struggle. Yeah. It's still very threatening. It's just like the nature of the deck. Yeah, you, you do feel like you're you're on struggle street sometimes. But sometimes you just feel like nothing can stop you. Sometimes it feels like nothing can stop you. Now, if they take this KO and they use up all their energy to do it, and I go Luminion, um, Arvin, Arvin for counter catcher, we could just knock out the back Scalibur. And then what? Because they've used two rods. They can... Okay, they can get back their backs. But they've used up three rare candy. So if they're out of candies, it's GG. If they attach like... Uh, what? Like 50 million energy this turn? Then they can hedge against that. But otherwise... 
Um, I think the plan is knock out Baxcalibur. Yeah, I think they're going to try and, like, over-attach and play towards something like knocking out um, Luminion for t uh, for the win. Or, well, not even Luminion, it would be, like, anything. They can knock out anything. Uh, if that's all your energy, I think they lose. As long as we have Countercatcher and Arvin in deck. Let's just make sure that that's going to be the case. Arvin, Countercatcher. And we can grab Sealstone, I guess. Because then we can grab um, Candy off the Sealstone. And grab Pidgeot. And be in a really good position for next turn. Um... Yeah. Candy for Pidgeot. And I think we can put down Bidoof as well. Just so we've got it. Quick search. It's gonna be. Bro, I don't know. I'll just put Big Barrel in hand. Have it for next turn. And then we'll see. So, if they've got four candy, then maybe. But they're not giving up. Prime catcher, sure. Fourth candy? That would be insane. Maybe they're just going to try and stall? Fair enough. So, what are we looking for? Yeah. Because I've got not much of anything left. The thing is, is what I probably want to do here is grab um, Yelchir and put the Turos back in the deck. If I just attack this, I think I lose. They probably have something like Boss's Orders or some other gusting, right? So let's draw cards first. So we're going to have to Yelch here. This could be bad. But we'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll see what they've got. Let's 
see what they've got. So what would be good? Ooh, maybe they've got like not enough energy to win left. I need to boss this up. And I think it's GG. I just gotta boss up the Chen Pao. Um, quick search. I, I probably shouldn't be doing it like this. I should be drawing first with the barrel, but if we do this and bring you up, I really doubt that they've got anything left. But that seems quite unlikely, right? How often do I use Kleffa? I used it in this game. It's good. You want to use it against any deck that has Spiritomb? Sometimes you just you end your turn with a zero card hand and you need to draw up. Dang, that was that was a banger of a game. I think that was pretty good. Uh, probably a good one to use for the YouTube. So if you are watching this in the future um, and you enjoy any of what this video has been about, then please consider subscribing over on youtube.com slash games. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.